With the ever-increasing population and consumption patterns, the current farming methods are unsustainable to say the least. Farmers will need to reach a higher level of food production by 2050 to help feed the world's rising population. In this video, we'll unearth some facts and trends highlighted by industry experts to predict what farming will look like in the coming years. First up, increasing food demand. Food demand is driven by two major factors, population and income. In 2050, the global population is predicted to increase increased to 9.1 billion people, up from 7.4 billion in 2016. According to research from the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, farmers around the world must raise food output by 70% compared to 2007 levels to fulfill the needs of a growing population. Growth in global income levels, particularly in developing countries, is also fueling food demand, and also the demand for certain types of food. As a result of growing incomes, these countries are looking to add more protein to their diets, for example. Example. In countries with increasingly health-conscious people, a new trend is emerging, with the focus on starch-based crops like corn shifting to more plant-based proteins like soybeans and other legumes. Yes, the popular keto diet fad comes at a cost. Next, a dying field? A significant shift in farmer ages was discovered in the census, which indicated huge consequences for the future. For the first time, farmers over the age of 65 exceed those under the age of 45, as in there are twice as many older farmers for for every farmer under 25, which is a huge disparity. When older farmers retire, there are fewer new ones to take their place. As a result, farm dynamics will change, becoming larger and more complex to manage, and farming will go from being a one-man solo show to operating as a medium to large-scale entity. Now, high-tech solutions. More outside labor will be required to cope with fewer farmers, and no, we don't mean immigrants, more like robots. High-tech solutions such as robots are expected to save the day. The time it takes for robotic machinery to go from prototype to commercial operation is expected to be quicker, with many new machines now equipped with electronics that allow them to operate with minimal human intervention. However, first and foremost, the legal and regulatory difficulties surrounding robotics must be resolved. But for now, we have a few substitutes. Drone technology is on the rise, and with its laws already in place, it can be used in farming. According to research by Bank of America, the agricultural drone industry has the potential to produce 100,000 jobs and $82 billion in economic activity in the United States over the next 10 years. Up next, gene editing. While slightly different from genetically modified organisms or GMOs, gene editing is a process by which the DNA of certain species is tweaked to get favorable results. Scientists believe that gene-edited crops will be available for 2050, allowing for a much wider variety of crops to be grown. This new technology will allow scientists to change genes in their DNA DNA with pinpoint accuracy in order to create a superior crop variety. Farmers will be able to select specific crop varieties with traits such as disease resistance, drought tolerance, or higher oil content in the future, all thanks to gene editing. By editing out features that impede widespread production, gene editing will allow for a greater range of crops to be grown. And then we have overcoming water shortages. In the future, crop producers will face new challenges related to water availability, environmental implications, and soil health. This is where new technology will help them cope with these difficulties more effectively. For example, a company has successfully created a monitoring system that includes continuous plant growth sensors, soil moisture sensors, and a microclimate unit. Data from the monitoring system is then available on mobile devices and desktops, allowing for fast response if necessary. Scientists predict that soil health measurement equipment and monitoring crop development through drones will become a common practice. Up next, Agriculture 4.0. In a report published by the World Government Summit, Agriculture 4.0 has been called the future of farming. What is Agriculture 4.0 and why do we need it? Hang in there, let us explain. According to the analysis, despite the fact that demand continues to rise, we will need to produce 70% more food by 2050. Meanwhile, agriculture's contribution to global GDP has dropped to just 3%, a third of what it was decades ago. Hunger affects around 800 million individuals worldwide, and in a worst-case scenario, 8% of the world's population, that's 650 million people, will still be malnourished by 2030. In reality, there's been very little innovation in the business in recent years, and nothing to suggest that food scarcity and famine will not be a problem in the next decades. To overcome these problems, governments, investors, and agricultural technology innovators will need to work together. Water, fertilizers, and pesticides will no longer be applied consistently over entire fields 
yields in Agriculture 4.0. Farmers will instead utilize the bare minimum of quantity and focus on very specific places. According to the paper, farms and agricultural operations would have to be operating considerably differently in the future, owing to technological improvements such as sensors, devices, equipment, and information technology. Robots, temperature and moisture sensors, aerial photographs, and GPS technology will all be used in the future of agriculture. Farms will be more profitable, efficient, safe, and environmentally friendly as a result of this modern equipment, precision agriculture, and robotic systems. So basically, everything that we covered in this video up until now is a part of Agriculture 4.0, which is predicted to be the new and innovative way of farming that is more efficient and technology-driven as most things now are. However, this is still something in the works, so it'll take about 20 to 30 years before we even see it in practice. And now, the farms of the future. By 2050, the entire concept of what defines a farm may have changed dramatically. While crop fields are unlikely to vanish entirely, vertical farming, or controlled environment agriculture, CEA, is gaining popularity. CEA is strongly reliant on technology in more ways than only greenhouse growing. Growers may create light recipes customized to the demands of each crop thanks to recent advancements in LED lighting. Greater photosynthesis leads to higher harvests. It's going to be a lot more high-tech with sensors that track temperature, moisture, humidity, and even the color of emerging fruits. All of this data will then be used by artificial intelligence to make watering, ventilation, and harvesting decisions, possibly by a robot. The result is that the optimum possible growing conditions are maintained throughout the crop's life cycle, maximizing the use of valuable resources such as water, electricity, light, space, and labor. Farmers would also be able to extend crop seasons to allow year-round cultivation. Do you know what that means? Mangoes all year round. According to agricultural academics, this is a great chance to cut down on some of the environmental consequences associated with modern farming, which is heavily reliant on land and resources. It's also a radical departure from regular farming and it's catching the attention of young farmers who are just getting started. According to a global census report last year, 49% of respondents were new to farming, 79% were under 40 and 88% were under 50. This is a refreshing change from previous stats. The younger generation wasn't even thinking about farming because of the long hours and dwindling rewards. To give you an example, the average age of a farmer in the United States is 57. In the United Kingdom, 60, in Kenya 60, and in Japan, a country recognized for its aging population, the average age was 67. There's also a boom in first-generation farmers, and what's really interesting about this is that about one-third of these new farmers are women. This trend is also seen in university agriculture programs where women currently outnumber men by about two to one. It's believed that the farmer of the future will most likely have more than one career up their sleeve, combining agriculture with other streams of income, sort of like a side hustle. According to the 2017 U.S. Census of Agriculture, two-thirds of young farmers selected something other than farming as their primary job, and this trend is only going to rise. This flexibility is made feasible by rapid technological advancements, the expanding agritech business. In the case of dairy farming, for example, reliable robotic systems have already allowed dairy farmers to embrace a more flexible working day. They no longer need to be physically present to milk the cows two or three times a day. No more waking up at the crack of dawn so the rest of us can eat cereal in peace. Millennials are the first generation to have grown up in a world dominated by computers, and they're mainly responsible for the agritech sector's prosperity and entrepreneurial spirit. To them, technology is second nature. It's simply there, just as a fixed telephone line was not a marvel to Generation X or the internet to Generation Z. By 2050, it will be the same for farming. Farmers of the future will be hands-on only in the sense that they have all of their farm's controls within easy reach, remotely accessible and for the most part, controlled by a bot that uses artificial intelligence to assess and make decisions on the multiple streams of data coming in from the field. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about farms of the future? Do you see yourself becoming a green thumb? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.